guys. Um, this is the second video this week about plants. Um, so if you're watching this one first, maybe go and watch the other one about um, transpiration. Before you watch this one, it doesn't super matter, but this one is meant to be the second one. Um, and this is all about plant hormones and tropism, which we'll talk about what that means. Um, this will be our last new video about plants and um, how they work and what they do. So there you go with that. Um, we'll start by talking about hormones. So you might have never thought about this before that plants have hormones, uh, just like animals do, and just like us. Um, and a hormone is defined as just a chemical that causes a specific response. Specific response. in an organism. Um, and so the ones, there are many for plants, but I'm just gonna talk about three of them. Um, oxen, ethylene, and abscisic acid. So oxen is a hormone that causes cells to elongate and it's used for plants to grow in a specific direction, like towards the sun. So oxen, um, causes cell elongation. Um, it actually is broken down by light. And so this little picture here is kind of showing that, that um, oxen builds up in darker areas of the plant. Because light destroys it. Um, and so what happens is that those cells that are on the dark side of the plant end up getting longer and that sort of bends the plant in the direction of the light, which you might have seen before if you've grown um, like new seedlings, they'll grow towards the light and what's causing that is actually auxin. So auxin is related to growth, especially at stem tips and young plants. And that's auxin. The other two hormones that are on this list are going to be related to um, ripening and even like death of certain parts of the plant. So that's how auxin is a little bit different. Okay, so let's move on to ethylene. Ethylene's really interesting because it's actually one of the only hormones that is a gas. So this is a gas hormone that causes ripening and um, abscission, which we'll talk about more in a second. Um, abscission is leaf death and dropping. Um, but what's cool about ethylene is that it, it is a gas, so it's what causes your, your fruits to get ripe. And one example is bananas. Bananas release a lot of ethylene. Um, and so if you put unripe fruit, especially you can put like a avocado that's still too hard to eat in the same bowl or in a brown paper bag with a banana. And the banana will actually release ethylene and cause the avocado to ripen faster, which is crazy. But you can like do that experiment at home if you have those fruits. Um, yeah, so ethylene causes ripening in, in different fruits. And then the last hormone is abscisic acid. It's named because it causes abscission. So causes abscission in response to extreme dehydration. Slash environmental stress. Let me scroll up. Um, 
Um, and so it also will cause stomata to close, which we talked about in the last video. Um, and that'll be for water conservation. And then it can cause the plant to have, you know, leaves that wither up and eventually drop off and die in order to conserve resources for the plant so that it's only sending, you know, its resources to healthy leaves. It will cause the, the dead ones to drop off and die. So the difference between ethylene and nebsosic acid is that ethylene is a gas and also that it will cause fruit ripening. And then epsisic acid is a, is a stress response. So it'll be releasing stress. Humans have stress hormones too. Ours is called cortisol. Um, and it is, it's what causes you to like feel stress. So, um, but we'll talk about that more when we get to humans. Okay, so those are three plant hormones, um, oxen, ethylene, and epsisic acid. And then what these hormones do is they cause the plant to grow in specific ways. And when we talk about plants growing in specific ways, that's called tropism. So tropism is growth. Let me move myself down here. Um, in response. To a stimulus. Um, or an environmental factor. So the growth could either be positive or negative. And if it's positive, it's growing towards growth towards the stimulus. And if it's negative, then it's going to be growth away from the stimulus. So for each of the ones that I tell you about, I'm going to give you a positive example and a negative example of that tropism. Now, one thing that's important for me to mention here is that tropism is not the same as taxis. Taxis, I'll put over here, um, so star taxis, which is spelled like taxis, but it's not taxis, it's taxis. Um, this is just movement in response to a stimulus, but it's not growth. So an example of this is like sunflowers turn to face the sun. That would be phototaxis because it's in response to light. Um, it's not phototropism because the sunflowers are not growing in that direction. They're just turning and then they'll turn right back when the sun moves again. So that's the difference between taxis and tropism. Now, going back to tropisms, the first one is phototropism. So photo is light. So this is growth in response to light. Um, a positive example is that new new plants will grow towards the light. So you can, like we talked about with oxen a minute ago, but um, new seedlings will grow toward the light. And this is why if you have house plants, um, you should like rotate them every once in a while if you want them to grow evenly because they will start to grow like very tilty towards the towards the light source. Um, unless the light source is, you know, equally balanced around them. But if you have a plant that's like towards a window, then you could rotate it if you want it to grow evenly. I had a succulent that actually like grew very tilted because I didn't rotate it for a long time, but that's phototropism. Um, negative phototropism is that roots grow away from the light. So they will grow. Um, if you shine light on them, they'll, they'll turn away. That's phototropism, response to light. Vigmatropism is response to touch. Growth in response to touch. 
Um, so an example of this is um, ivy and other climbing plants will grow um, up against a surface and they, they like to be touched. So they'll grow continuing to touch the wall or the pole or whatever it is they're growing on. So I'll say ivy and other climbing plants Um, we'll search for attachment. In the fall, we watched that video about plants, the life episode about them, and it showed the climbing plants with the little hooks that would hook on and climb up to the tops of the trees. That's an example of figma tropism too. Um, and then negative figma tropism is again with roots. Um, so this is growth, I'll say, let's see, roots grow away. From items that they touch. So, for example, if a tree has roots that runs into a pipe, the roots will start to grow away from the object that it's touching um, if it has space. So, it doesn't always have space, but if it does, the roots will try to grow in the opposite direction. And then the last one is gravitropism, which is pretty obvious, I think, about what that's going to be. That is response to gravity growth. In response to gravity. Um, in this example, positive gravitropism is going to mean that it's growing with gravity. And so the example for this one is roots grow down in the direction of gravity. So even if you turn a plant on its side, the roots will start to, to tilt downwards and grow downwards um, in, because of gravity. And then um, the opposite of that would be like a stem. So stems grow upward against gravity. And you can see that too if you turn a plant on its side. And there's some really cool examples of like trees that got turned on their sides and then they start growing back upwards um, as negative gravitropism. They're growing away from gravity. Uh, and it really, it really does it, it really happens. It's uh, very cool. Okay, so those are three types of tropism. One other thing I wanna mention um, is nastic movement. So nastic movement is response to a stimulus, but not in any specific direction. So it's not positive or negative. A really cool example of that is Venus flytraps where they'll be touched and then they'll close, but they're not um, closing like in the direction of a specific touch or um, with it or against it. They're, they're just responding to it and closing. And a lot of carnivorous plants are like that. And then just carnivorous plants in general are really cool um, to talk about in terms of adaptations because they are carnivorous because they live in environments where the soil is really nutrient poor. So um, actually the natural area that a lot of carnivorous plants grow, including Venus flytraps, is eastern North Carolina and eastern South Carolina, like in the sand hills, where the soil is really sandy and there's not a lot of nitrogen. So the reason they are adapted to eat insects is so that they can have a nitrogen source. And that's that's the only way they get it because it's not in their soil, which is like a pretty cool and amazing thing that plants evolve the ability to actually like digest animals. They're still considered to be autotrophic, so it's important they still can do photosynthesis and they are doing photosynthesis, um, but they get their nitrogen mostly from their, their meals, <laughs> from their insect meals. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you have questions, let me know. Love you lots. Bye.